welcome back to my channel. I've got a few projects that I'm going to chat to you about today that I've been working on this month and yeah I'm quite excited because I've got a few different things so I've actually got a little bit of crochet, I've got some knitting, some sewing so I'll have a quick sip of my tea and I'll get on. I've got actually I don't think I've shown you these cups before and this is Little Wren Pottery she has loads of different styles of cups. These are like the cappuccino style, but she's got some really beautiful pieces. She's a maker here in the UK. So I'll pop a link in the show notes if you like lovely pottery and ceramics and things like that. Um, and yeah, so actually before I show you my projects, I'll talk about what I'm wearing. So I've finished my trust card again that I've been showing you for the last few weeks. I can stand back so you can Hopefully get a good look. I'm really really pleased with how the pattern came out. I think it's beautiful and the yarn has blocked so nicely. It's got that like really nice swingy kind of drapey feel to it. I'll come a bit closer so you can see the buttons. Yeah I think you can see those. Um, these were from the textile garden and I actually picked them up when I went to Fibre East which is a fibre festival here. Um, and yeah, I think they work really, really well. It's quite hard choosing. I always find that's one of the hardest bits is picking the buttons at the end of the project. But yeah, I think those work really well. So again, I'll pop a link um, to Textile Garden because they have loads and loads of buttons. Although I think it's probably quite hard choosing online. They seem to be at all the UK shows. So hopefully wherever you are in the UK, you've probably been to a festival where you've seen the Textile Garden because I think they do a lot of shows. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with that and the pattern, I just knit the pattern as is. The only thing I'm not sure about is the cuffs because I did mine a little bit longer so I could kind of have this like cosy feel. I wanted to do like a turned back cuff. But now I've done that, I'm not really sure if that was silly and I should just unravel and just make them a proper length. I kind of, I don't know, kind of like them and I'm sort of getting used to it. But yeah, that was the only thing is that I knit them a bit longer than I would usually. But apart from that, yeah, the pattern was really easy to follow. It's um, by Melissa Well, I think it's how you say her name, and she designed this for Brooklyn Tweed. Although I actually use the fibre company Canopy Worsted, which is a really lovely, it's like an alpaca merino, and it has a little bit of rayon from bamboo, which is a lovely blend. So it's super, super cosy, really soft and draping. It's going to be lovely for the winter time. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how my cardigan turned out. I've mentioned the show notes a couple of times already. Um, and if you're looking for those, there'll be a, lo a link below this video where it'll take you over to my blog where I'll have all the patterns and the yarn and any materials I'm talking about today. And I also send those on email. So if you'd rather have the show notes straight to your email inbox, you can also sign up below this video and you'll get a notification when I basically pop up a new video and you'll have all of the show notes sent directly to you so you'll get all that information right there in the email. So I will get on with showing you some other bits and um, what should I talk about next? Let's go on to these socks because this is actually another Fibre East purchase and this is some wool barn yarn that I've knit into a Feathering the Nest sock which is a Danielle George pattern. Danny has the Little Bobbins podcast, which you might know because I think lots of people follow Danny if you're into knitting and you watch these kind of YouTube videos, you've probably come across Danny. But I love this pattern. I actually changed it to knit mine toe up and with a fish lips kiss heel. So it's a little bit different, but I basically plugged her stitch pattern in, which is a really, really lovely, simple, easy to follow pattern. I'm not sure if it does it justice showing it on the camera. I think. Um, sometimes like with a speckled yarn the pattern almost gets a little bit lost when I show it on the camera but in real life it's a really beautiful subtle pattern that was easy to follow and it was exactly what I needed. I wanted something quick and easy to knit up with this yarn and yeah I just didn't want to think too much. I wanted one of those patterns where it's not, I do like it when you follow a pattern and you can kind of get into the rhythm of it rather than just knitting vanilla sock where you're going round and round and that was sort of perfect. It was just enough variation each row to sort of keep my interest but it wasn't anything too complicated and knitting it in the way I would normally knit a sock sort of with my usual cast on that I would do and the fish lips kiss heel I sort of could just really have it as a easy relaxing project and oh actually I'll show you my little bag that I've got my project in it's one of my summer berries bags 
This is the little sock sack. Um, oh, I've got some fluff. I've got fluff everywhere at the moment. Fluff and I've been doing a quilt project, so I've got threads everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, but here we go. Let's have a quick look. You can see I've started my second sock and I've just got, I'm still actually casting on, the, well, I've done the cast on me, but I'm doing the increases for the toe. So I've got that teeny little bit and I'll give you a little look at the yarn. This is the twist sock base. So it has a little bit of nylon. I think it's like an 80-20 merino nylon. And as I said before, it's the wool barn, and I got this at Fiber East, so it was nice to pick in person. This is this colorway is called Nougat, which I think is really it's like my favorite kind of speckled yarn cheese, it's like something very subtle, like calm colors. And yeah, I'm really really loving those socks, so I'm pleased with how those are turning out. And the next thing I'll talk about is my crochet project because. I do not usually do crochet. I don't know really how to crochet. Basically, this is a wool and the gang pattern and it's called the Million Reasons Bag. And I'd seen a couple of people and this sort of style of bag here in the UK is super popular at the moment. And um, my friend Clev, Sister Mountain, she's made one of these. And another podcaster, um, I think it's called Potter and Bloom, she has made this bag and I think she used the same colourway, this is called Cinnamon Rust, but as I said I really don't know how to crochet, the only thing I've ever done is a coaster, so I totally relied on YouTube videos and Wool and the Gang have lots and lots of videos that kind of walk you through each of the steps and even in the pattern there's quite detailed instructions um, sort of talking you through if you'd prefer to have it like in picture form. It's not actual photos but they have like illustrations to sort of show you and it talks you through the, with the words but I find video easier. But I sort of felt like with a bag it hasn't got to fit and as long as the stitches were uniform and they were all the same it didn't really matter if I wasn't 100% doing them quite right I think it and I think it's come out great anyway so I'm really really pleased with how it's turned out. The yarn that you use is really interesting, it's actually paper, so it's called Ra Ra Raffia. Let's see if it can info there, but it's actually made of paper, which sounds really bizarre. I don't know how well the camera will pick that up, but you can see it is just like a strand of this kind of like paper, but it is so strong, you can really really pull and it's just not breaking. So you can like you can see it will tear. Oh, <laughs> after me saying that, oh, it won't break, it won't break, but I've really, really pulled on it before and I've never had that happen. So you can see, look, I'm really, really tugging that hard and it hasn't done anything. So I think it is, I, I would say it's pretty strong and I've been carrying loads of stuff in here. I guess, well, to be fair, it's probably strong because of its kind of got this crochet technique and you, I don't know how many, I think it was like three strands that you have crochet. But I mean, I just was really, really intrigued when I saw this, I just thought I wanted to have a go and the kit was on sale. So I was kind of swayed by that. If I stand up, I can maybe give you an idea of how it, the size of it, how it looks on. But, yeah, I'm really, really pleased. I think I said it's the Million Reasons bag. I'll show you actually the um, the packaging. It's really cool that it comes in. So that's what it looks like. It comes in this bag. And I don't know if it's still in here. But you basically get like a little envelope that has your pattern in. And you can have it the crochet hook. I just chose to get the crochet hook separately. But um, yeah, I was quite pleasantly surprised by that. I think it took me about a week of doing it each evening and I was really, really excited to work on the project. It had that feeling, you know, when you very first start knitting, it was like that kind of feeling for me that I just couldn't stop. I wanted to work on it all the time. I was like so excited to see how it would turn out. I kind of really had that like urge to work on the project all the time, which is how I felt when I first started knitting was that I just wanted to be doing it all the time and I think when you're a beginner you kind of have that you're not sure how a project's going to turn out I think after you've got a few projects under your belt you have a bit more confidence that you can produce something so it's going to look like it how, how it does in the pattern so if you understand how to swatch and do like get the right gauge 
for your project and about how much ease is shown in the pattern, like all those things kind of help you to make the right decisions when you're starting a project and then your project should turn out right at the end and <laughs> look how it does in the pattern. Whereas I think when you're starting out, you don't have that confidence. So you kind of want to work on something and keep like to just to get to the finished product so you can see what it will look like in the end and check that it fits and that was how I felt with this is like I just couldn't believe that this bag was going to materialize from this kind of pile of spaghetti that was growing and this like crochet technique that wasn't even sure if I was doing it right but yeah it was really really cool project to work on and I'm just very interested by the yarn it didn't feel hard to work with I found it quite easy and when I'd finished I actually did iron mine it doesn't tell you to iron it in the pattern but yeah I think just to kind of like almost like flatten it a little bit and just smooth it out and kind of get the shape just nice I kind of yeah I just went over it with an iron and that it seemed to hold up fine so that's my bag that I've been working on and the other project that I've got you might have seen if you follow me on Instagram I was talking about this at the weekend because I started a quilt so one of my friends has just had a baby so Kerry, if you're watching, <laughs> I don't think she'd be watching this because she's not a knitter, but as she's on maternity leave, you never know, she might be on the on YouTube and catching up with what I'm doing. This is for baby Rose. And I'm seeing them next week, so I've been, let's see, how far? I think I'm about halfway round on the binding. You can see, so on this side is this lovely spring strawberry print and on the back I've got this kind of more just very minimal kind of slightly abstract print which I think is really nice contrast I love the kind of like really modern like black and white print on this side I'll come a little bit closer there you go and it looks really sweet I think with this pink binding and it's funny because it was just in my last episode that I was talking about quilts like this and you can see so I've got on one side I've basically got my front fabric, my back fabric and in the middle is sandwiched the quilt batting and then you can see that I've quilted this just with straight lines that are, I did mine four inches apart to get this look and yeah and my binding is two and a quarter inch strips I'm just doing this double binding but I think it looks so pretty with the pink so this is the corner that I've done, it's got like this mitered corner but if you get round to the other side you'll see I haven't finished binding this. So I'm slowly working my way round. Um, but yeah, I think you can kind of get quite a good idea, I think, of how it will look when it's finished. And I just used one and a half metres of the fabric, which I got um, from my local fabric store, Fabric HQ. I'll link below the three different fabrics that I've used are they're not from the same collection, so I can't remember what they were all called, but I will put that in the show notes, each of the fabrics that I used, in case you want to do something similar. But yeah, I think this is going to be lovely for a baby. I'm kind of imagining that you put it down and use it as like a play mat, and yeah, it's just nice to have something like this. The, like a, I don't know, it will look pretty in the nursery, and I'm sure they can like lay it out on the floor, lay it on the sofa if they want to, and baby can have a roll around if they've got their toys out as she gets a little bit older but I haven't um, used any fancy tools you can see if I um, when you see on that side probably see on this side can you see there's like very faint pink threads like that's basically my basting thread so I haven't used any pins or anything like that I just to base my layers of fabric I laid them all out and I just went with really really big loose stitches no knots in the end, I just went all the way from the centre, stitching across to base all of my layers and kind of worked my way out. And yeah, and then for the binding, I, as I said before, I cut two and a quarter inch strips and I think it was a Susie Quilts um, tutorial that I used just to refresh on how to do the binding. So I'll put a link to that as well. But um, yeah, apart from that, I used just a pencil to mark out my sewing lines to do the actual quilting so I measured those using quilting ruler four inches apart and just as I say with pencil that I know will wash out really easily I just marked my lines and I used a walking foot on my machine just to help the quilting go through really smoothly it helps I think um, a walking foot basically helps you feed 
by such a thick layer of fabric. So I think it maybe has feed dogs sort of on the top and the bottom, if I'm remembering that rightly. But basically it helps when you're using lots of layers for everything to just all go through at the same speed and you get really nice even stitch marks. So that's the other project I've been working on. So I've, I've been really enjoying all the things that I've had going on. Like I feel like there's quite a bit of variety and I'm really pleased to finish my cardigan. I'm so happy with how that turned out. Just have a sip of my tea. I think maybe I don't need my cardigan on now. It's been such funny weather here in the UK. It's been really, really raining. It's been cold, so I was actually okay with my cardigan on at first, but now I'm sort of thinking, Probably because I've been chatting, I'm getting a bit hotter now. But, so, I've got all of those, and the last project I have, I'm going to have to come back to you, I just realised I haven't got it. There we go, sorry about that, I realised that I was working on this, it's my tenure tea this morning, and I'd left it over there on the sofa, so this is in my summer berries bag which I was showing off last week. It's a new addition to my sort of seasonal collections that I do. It's the first time I've used this green bottom and I'm really happy that everybody seems to like it. So I've been working on the tenure tee and that's a Caitlin Hunter pattern. I've never knit one of her patterns before. I know they're super, super popular, but this is in canopy fingering. I'm using this sort of, I'm not sure if it'll focus on the label, but it's this lovely kind of neutral brown and canopy fingering is 50% alpaca, 30% wool and 20% viscous. So it's a really, really soft blend. I'll show you my swatch actually before I show you what I've been working So I think you'll get an idea of the fabric. And yeah, I think that shows it really nicely. It's got like slight sort of tonal like variation to the colour and you can see it's like really soft and drapey, it feels really nice, it feels lovely to work with and yeah I'm knitting this, let's see where's my foot, there we go, and see if I can show you, it's always a bit tricky showing lace isn't it, but I think if I stretch that out a little bit like that and I hold it to the light get an idea of how the lace is growing but yeah it's a really really pretty top and I don't know I had this pattern for so long and some things like held me back from knitting it and I think it's because I'm not 100% sure if it's something that I would really enjoy wearing um I'm not sure if the style is going to suit me, you know, and just have lots of those kind of things that hold you back. And when you're knitting, it takes so long for a garment to kind of come to life. I feel like I like to be certain that it's going to be something that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of, that I'm going to, that the fit's going to be right, that I'm going to be very happy with the finished piece. And I think this just had a few like question marks over it, whereas I love the pattern and I love it on, like everybody I've seen who's knit it, I think it looks great. But I was sort of thinking, is it something that I would actually wear, like having a t-shirt in a knitted fabric, I was kind of like, wasn't really sure what sort of situation you'd wear it in. But I think this is going to be really nice for autumn. I think it'll be a lovely kind of autumn piece, and especially in this brown, I think it's going to be nice. And I've just got to the stage where I've got quite a lot of practical things in my wardrobe. So I've knit, um, I've got like a few, I've got like a v-neck jumper, I've got this cardigan, I've got a couple of other, um, I've got a cropped cardigan and another sort of cardigan with like a little bit of lace detail. So I've got a few different kind of proper knitwear pieces that I feel they're kind of like the staple pieces and this can be something a bit more frivolous really. It's like it doesn't have to fill that part of my wardrobe, like I've got all the staples so now I feel like I can take a chance on something and it's not the end of the world if I don't wear it loads, but I wouldn't have started it if I didn't think I would, so I feel like I've got, most of me thinks like it's gonna be fine, but I think before that is what's held me back from casting on, is that I maybe just wasn't really sure if it was something that I'd get loads of wear out of, but now I kind of feel like, even if it is a piece that you only wear sort of like a few weeks in the year, because I feel like it's got to be the right kind of weather that you'd wear something short-sleeved, but it's also cool enough that you want to wear wool, so. 
yeah, I think it's a little bit of a, it's not something that I'm going to wear all winter long because it's got short sleeves, but I think it's going to be a really, really lovely project. And I'm actually really enjoying the lace. It's kind of, each row is intuitive enough that once I've done like the first couple of repeats, I can just get in the rhythm and I can sort of carry around the whole row without having to look at the pattern for every stitch. So I'm actually really enjoying that. And it's kind of a nice change from knitting on this cardigan. A lot of it was long rows of um, sort of, especially when I was doing the sleeves, they're basically just doing stockinettes. So I kind of felt ready to do something where I had a little bit more of a challenge um, mentally, which I've enjoyed. So, so I've got that on the go. That's the only project that I'm working on. So hopefully next time I see you, I'll, I'll have got a bit more of that done and I'll be past the lace. And I'm not sure what to cast on next. I feel like I've got I've got the pair of socks, so that's probably enough for me, really. I don't tend to knit on tons of things all at the same time. I kind of like to actually like work quite monogamously on something and get to the point where that's finished and then cast on something similar. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed looking at those bits that I've been making. I really enjoyed chatting to you and sharing what I've been making. As I said, um, you can find all the show notes below this video in the... Um, in the sort of description box there'll be a link to sign up to the email if you want to get the show notes to your inbox and there'll be a link to the blog and you can also if you're interested in any of my summer berries bags they'll have there'll be definitely some in the shop when this video goes live because I've been working on restock for the weekend so you should be able to find any of the bags that you're looking for and if you ever don't you can always send me an email I get lots of people emailing me if something goes out of stock that's usually when people want it so you're always free to give me an email if there's something that you don't see in the shop but anyway I'll um, wish you a great day and I'll speak to you soon